What's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Sai TV. We are live for the debate show, Friday night debate show, talking all things Man United. You know what I'm saying? We've got a lot to discuss. Frankie De Jong, uh, Kobe Milo contract, and obviously the preview as well uh, to the game. Massive, massive game on the weekend. We've got Marcel in the building. Marcel, how you doing, bro? Big up, man. Big up everybody inside. Um... Yeah, man, feeling confident about this game against Villa and I'm just feeling happy about the club in the terms of the process that we're in right now. And um, yeah, looking forward to the game on the weekend as well, bro. Yeah, man, big up, big up to you. we got Miller in the building. Miller, how are you doing? I'm good, man. Glad it's Friday. Bring on the weekend. Busy weekend yeah. of football. Yeah, absolutely busy, busy weekend of football. we got man like Staffy in the building. Staffy, what are you saying, man? I'm good, Said. I'm good, I'm good. Not look, I'm not happy about today's news. Um, it looks like I'm gonna have to educate <laughs> the masses again today, but I'm here and up for <laughs> it. So, but thank you for having me, man. Smash the likes, everyone. Yeah. Subscribe, and big up to all the panel. Let's get to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Big up to Adam as well in the building. Professor Adam, what are you saying? I'm good. I'm good, bro. Happy to be here as well. Been a bit, uh, been a while. So, mm. looking forward to this. Been so busy with school that I missed pretty much all the news. <clears> about, <throat> <you> know, <laughs> like on the floor as much uh <laughs> during the show actually so yeah big up everyone yeah always man absolutely big up big up man and then we got man like the new yorker from greek the greeks but we say man doing good thank you for having me hope everyone is good make sure you guys like the video and like mina said big football weekend big sports weekend yeah just gonna gonna enjoy it yeah absolutely absolutely big up to everyone here as well man um i don't know what it is with youtube but they're not sending out notifications so everyone hit the like button let's get the algorithm up and yeah man let's have a good show man um listen let's talk about it there's some news today yeah coming out well it came out last night of frankie de young being very very unsettled and you know there's there's reports coming out that from the spanish press that he may want to leave and is considering leaving um Listen, personally for me, I think, they, you know what's mad here on, on, on social media? Maybe social media is not the perfect place to kind of talk about here. But it's like, everybody's like, yo, like, we don't need him anymore. Like, I just found it bizarre. This is where we're going to discuss it here. But Marcel, talk to me. Frankie de Jong, Saga 2. You know what I mean? Obviously, last summer was crazy. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the summer before that it was, actually. But yeah, 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 man, are you ready for it all again? Are you it's, here it's... for it? What yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it, bro, Said, I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. Um, it. It's all at the discretion of our manager. But in terms of the direction that he wants to go in with a type of footballer in that position, it's Frankie de Jong. Um, and Kobe's yeah. so adaptable and, and, and so like generational in that area of the football pitch. He could take up any of the three positions and compliment Kobe and, and compliment, sorry, Frankie in that specific tailored role that Ten Hag wants him for in that DM carrying the ball almost like a almost like an inverted 10. You know, we've we've been hearing a lot about pure football, you know, from Hazard. Um, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Frankie Young's got that ilk of pure football. And what and what I what I think Hazard means by that is a footballer that can take the ball at any area of the pitch and dribble past one, two and three, the mm -hmm. mechanics of the way that they carry the football and commit players, you know, Hazard, Ben Arfa, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, um, you know, these these are pure footballers. You know, these are kind of players that can just, you know, unlock a game of football. So, um, but the way that Ten Hag wants to deploy them in the DM, he wants that from his build-up phase. He wants a player that can unlock a game and carry the ball through the lines. And, and, and Frankie De Jong's brilliant at that. You know, do we have to keep going back to this saga? This could be our Schneider kind of sign, uh, you know, situation uh, season, yeah, yeah. After season after season. True. But... I'm here for it, Said. I mean, it's a step in direct, the right direction to get this type of world-class footballer in your club compared to the types of footballers that we currently have, you know, in, in, in that position and just 
out and out in midfield. So it would be a, a great addition if we could get him. I mean, the economics of it might be something else, how much he's earning and, and, and what it would cost. And if it actually is a situation itself, that's another thing entirely. But if there's a clear and obvious opportunity to bring Frankie De Jong into the club, then I'm taking it. Mm. You know what's bad, yeah? I, I just look at his technical abilities, yeah? You know, people talk about physicality. Bro, listen, man. When, you, when you've got a player like this, got so much ability on the ball. You know I mean? I just think it's a no-brainer. Especially when I look at midfield now, in the, in, the, in the world now. You're not getting, like, the standard midfielders anymore. You're getting either talent coming through or... You're getting players that are maybe a bit overpriced in that in that regards. But Minna, listen, it's one of them. We are gonna look like we're we're begging here and whatnot, but at the same time, that summer he was forced out. You know what I mean? It wasn't right what was going on. He was owed money. There was a lot of context behind it. Like it's not as if he rejected us. You know, there was a lot of context behind it. But where are you at, Minna? Like in terms of De Jong staying and going, like, are you feeling it? Yeah, like, listen, De Jong's a great player. And anyone, any team that would say they wouldn't have him is an out and out liar. Um, the wages thing don't bother me because I don't think it's I don't think he's on seven hundred k. I think that's including his deferred wages, which he deferred uh, in yeah. COVID when when Barcelona was fi- struggling yeah. financially. Barcelona is struggling financially right now. Um, they've just been uh, charged a big fine. I think it was like forty million. Um, he did. I don't think he rejected us last year. I think he just said that he he didn't want to leave. Like he he was committed to the Barcelona project oh. under Xavi. I, I was kind of yesterday. I was kind of leaning towards the idea of Frankie De Jong and a transfer saga 2.0. But now, the more I think about it, the more that I think about the sort of profile that Manchester United need. I mean, Bruno Fernandes, I don't think is going anywhere at the moment. And I think to partner mm. Kobe in that midfield, we need we need we need a, a, a engine. We need an engine in that midfield, in my opinion. Anyways, I feel like we need a physical player. With so many times, the the midfield battle is lost because of physicality. Um, I seen it against that Newcastle game. I remember when Mason Mount was starting, mm. uh, Bruno in the middle. Sometimes Kobe, he's still developing, he's still learning. It's good to have Casemiro back now. But I think if United are going to go out and buy a midfielder in the summer, they have to. They have to buy. A box to box they need to buy a beast they need to buy an engine they need to buy someone who's physical um someone that's uh, able you know in aerial jewels um someone that can get up and down the pitch someone who doesn't play safe on the ball um but also is progressive in possession and someone that literally can be that engine in the midfield because that's what really and truly i feel like that's what we need um i don't think i think frankie de Jong, the idea sounds nice but the practicality of it is not realistic this is what I'm saying. Like, are we are we saying that to kind of accommodate Bruno in the team, or are we saying that of what we need? Because a Frankie De Jong still is needed in his team to progress the ball. Like we only got Martinez. We can't have one player that can progress the ball. Like that's the way I kind of look at it for me. Is like I feel like it's one of them where we're looking at well, would he fit in or would that fit in? And I get it. You have to still make a team, but I'm like we still need that first phase player or that second phase player that can get the ball, receive it, like. You know, we don't have that. Yeah, Kobe Mino could do that, but everybody's like, he's in the team straight away. Like, let's relax. He's a kid. You know what I mean? He's he's, he's developing. Every, we don't want that pressure for him. We don't want to be like, yo, like, he's in the team every week and we he's the, he's the future. Yeah, but let him develop naturally. Like, I don't want it to be a case of he's ready-made for a whatever and, you know, he's, he's, he's staple in the team. Like, let's just relax on that one. But that's just my own opinion. But, I mean, I know where Staffy and, and Griggs are, so I'm going to bring in Adam. You know, before I bring them to it, yeah. So no, let everyone go before yeah. me, say, because I don't even know where Griggs is at. So I'd like to hear everyone. Nah, Griggs, Griggs, Griggs. I, I see Griggs what he was tweeting. But I yeah, didn't see anyone's um, tweet, so you guys can go. Someone said you got Amrabat. Now nah, Amrabat ain't, ain't, ain't De Jong. Let's let's be real. I think even I think even Adam can admit that Amrabat is not De Jong. You know what I'm saying? To you, but uh, yeah. you know, Adam, chat to us, Adam. What are you saying? Yeah, look, uh, I, I like Frankie De Jong. <laughs> I always liked him to be honest, and I think he's yeah. He's, he's a good profile to have, and he's a versatile profile as well. Yeah. So he, he's a proper midfielder. He plays in midfield. That's what he does. He's not really an attacking or a defensive or this or that. He's just a good midfield player all around. And I love those players. Yeah. But the thing is, I, I don't want Ten Hag to stay. So what, <laughs> so what happens then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the honesty. I love the honesty. I don't want Ten Hag Come to on. stay. But I, the thing is, I want as many good players at my club as possible. So I want the best players to come in. And I think Frankie de Jong is a class act. He really, really is. And yeah. I agree with what you said about Kobe Mino because I've, I haven't been excited about a young player, a young academy player since, since I don't know when. 
maybe Paul Pogba or something like that because Fre Kobe might know he looks good to me. But like you said, it's a bit too much pressure for an 18 year old. It's too much. You can't expect him. You can't oh. burn him. And we need more players. He needs to learn as well. Like it, the fact that he's talented and very, very good already doesn't mean he has nothing to learn from other good players that we can bring in. So we need young good players to learn from all the good players. And I, I, I'm just a big fan of Frankie Young, to be honest. And the the money thing, I don't know. I think Mina is right. I don't, I don't believe it's 700. I think it's the deferred wages. And he's on big wages. But then again, we are a rich club. But my the main issue I have is who's making the decisions? Because now we have this thing coming out today in the last few days. But what football do we do we want to play in the future? What is the plan for the manager? What is the plan for Manchester United as a football club and the way the football is is visioned for the years to come? What is the direction? And then you need, you need to answer those questions before you, you get to the players. To be honest, I think Frankie de Jong can play in probably any type of football, any type of team. I think he's mm -hmm. very, very, like, all around Real. complete. But he just and another thing as well, like from everything we learned on, about Ten Hag since the, for, for the last eighteen months, he refused to come the first time. So Ten Hag is the type of man that he's petty enough to bring him and bench him just to make a point and seek revenge or something mm -hmm. like that because he strikes me as the type of man to do that. So I don't know, I really don't know, but I, I would love him to be honest. I, I can't lie, I would love a player like Frankie, like Frankie Dion. Mm. Someone said here. Um... No more big wages, people. Listen, I don't think like listen. If if Varane leaves in the summer, that's three hundred fifty k wages gone. You know, Casemiro could probably be leaving the summer, so there are going to be wages there, man. You know, what I mean, people are going on like where, you know, what I mean, there's going to be no wages available. Like we got rid of David Hale. That's there's money there in terms of that wages. Like how much more can we keep saying like wages, wages, wages? Like there's wages there for people to use, man. So I don't buy into that cop out. But Griggs, chat to us, man. What are you saying, man? I'm good on this side with Dion. Uh, I don't really want him. I don't think that he fits his... I don't think he fits a midfield like with Kobe Manu. I think, first of all, I think they're very similar players. So that's uh -huh. the first issue. You can't really partner them because where is your six? Because uh -huh. they're both kind of hybrids. I've seen the young trying to play a lone six in, a, in Barcelona, and his defensive awareness is horrific. He does not mark his runners at all. He just he just, he just just ball watching, and then the player just runs right past him. We're talking about... Let's say Ten Hag is here because I think that's the only way we get the... Uh, the young is if Ten Hag is here. If Ten Hag is not this manager, there is no the the, the young dream is dead because I don't think the next manager will really want the young, depending on who mm. it is about it. So let's say you have Ten Hag, right? Ten Hag's system is known to leave a lot of open space. You're gonna have a Frankie the Young and a Kobe Mainu, and Mainu is not the Mainu is a great Mainu has been amazing defensively, but he's still very young. So his ball where it's not gonna he doesn't have the perfect awareness yet. He's not experienced enough. Exactly. Then you add a Frankie the Young whose awareness defensively is already weakened. Where is your bat? Where is good? Where's the defensive awareness in the midfield? And then you have a Bruno who just presses for the for the sake of pressing. You're just gonna have a wide open midfield again. Second of all, with wages, I don't think I don't think he's worth anything over 300 k wages. That's the first thing. I don't think you should really be mm. paying that kind of midfielder that many wages. I think you should only be playing those mm. kind of people. We're talking about game changers like Kevin De Bruyne is a midfielder, but he's worth that because he changed he could change the game in the flick of a switch, right? So mm. I just don't think that you really need the young if Kobe Mano did not exist then yes I'd say go get the young and you just go get another go, go get a physical six like me uh Mina said we need an engine and and I think Kobe Mano is a good enough player where you start to build you start this summer to build the midfield around him because we know I know he's young and all that kind of stuff but one thing he's shown is that he's already mature beyond his years he doesn't play like an 18 year old he's more of like a 23 year old that's how good he is so I just don't see the reason for Frankie the young we're gonna have to pay what 50, 60 mil for him, probably. I don't think Barcelona is going to let him go like that, just like 30, 30 mil. So we're talking about that. Mm -hmm. He's not going to take that big of a wage cut because we're Man United. So I just don't see the issue. And even if I don't, I don't agree with like accommodating Bruno because even if even if you take out Bruno and bring in any other team, right? Let's say you bring Florian Verts, right? That midfield still wouldn't work. There's just two. There's two. First of all, there's no height. So second, second balls in the midfield, we're going to lose every single one of them. As good as Kobe's in air as aerially. Frankie can't win, a, can't win an aerial duel. Whoever the number 10 is or advanced eight isn't going to win the aerial duel. So in the Premier League, that midfield just doesn't work. It's going to get bullied. So it just makes no sense to me. Yeah. Mm. Maybe maybe later after uh, after Staffy, we can come back to this because I think I disagree on a few points, to be honest. Uh, mm. It's nothing to disagree on, brother, because the, the, the Mina, Mina and, and, and Griggs did my work for me. I might as well leave right now because I was very worried I was going to be the only one sitting here 
without a blindfold on his eyes and actually talking about nonsense just because we like the young, the name, not what he actually does on the pitch. I think Griggs probably did my job for me now. I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to repeat some of the stuff that he said. De Jong is what we needed a year and a half ago. A year and a half later, I don't need that no more. It's too late now. I don't need it. Because I have someone why? that can give me, and I'll tell you why. Oh, uh, say it always have an explanation. I never leave with empty statements. Mm. A year and a half ago, we didn't have a progressor in the midfield, which is why we signed Ericsson. He was the only thing we could have got on the market, especially with the wages that we paid at the time. So we couldn't get anything. You're really getting... Ericsson was the B-Tech version of Frankie De Jong. De Jong is better with his pole progression and all that. But that was the reason why we got him in that midfield. Now, a year and a half later, you got Manu, who could play a six and an eight. He carries the ball well. He actually does everything that you need from De Jong and more because he has so much more on the defensive end to offer. And he's also 18 years old and he costs you no money that you can build the team around now. So what do you do right now? Do you go and get the only missing piece in that midfield? Or do you go and get something that you already have? If I would ask you right now from this midfield, who would you most likely replace between Menu, Bruno, and Casemiro? You're most likely going to mention either Casemiro or Bruno based on the age or based on a lot of people. Why, 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 why are we talking about replacing, though? The thing is, why are we talking oh, about replacing? Because you're trying to strengthen the midfield, yeah. no? Okay, so you're trying yeah, to strengthen, strengthen the midfield. Yeah. Okay, yeah, strengthen how do you strengthen the midfield? You go get a box, uh, box-to-box midfielder. Well, this is said it perfectly. I don't necessarily agree, to be honest. I'll, I'll, I'll finish and then go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So, you sorry. need a box to box. I'll tell you why. Because you got Casemiro doing that, who's losing legs, who's getting injured. Well, let's be honest, it's not really reliable when you give him the ball, anyways. But you see him trying to bump forward all the time. If you get a box to box who's defensively aware, because I'm not even talking about what, what Frankie De Jong lacks, I'm just saying what we need in this midfield. If you get a box to box who's more defensively sound and can actually go forward and probably get you some GA, because I like the GA that Casemiro gets us 14. 14 GA seasons actually not bad for, for someone in his position. That's much more balanced than what Frankie De Jong can give you. What does Frankie De Jong uh, what, what does Frankie De Jong give you in that midfield? That's what we need to talk about. Frankie De Jong is nothing other than a ball progressor. He's just very, very, very good at progressing the ball up the pitch. He's involved in one third of the pitch only, which is the second the, the second phase of play. So he's not involved on in defending and he's not defo- uh, involved in the attacking. His job that he does very well by his standards is to get the ball from the back line and give it to the front line. And that's it. He's not creative. He doesn't score. He doesn't assist. And as, as Greg said, since Busquets left, they played him in the lone six and Barcelona fans have had enough of him. His defensive awareness Are you in sure the he six, don't create an attack? Have you, have you watched him? Have you watched him lately? He does create, though. He creates yeah, his natural creation. You don't see the ball where he played it into... I can't remember the game yet, but he played a ball into Ferran Torres on his feet. And that's so I, I sent you his stats. Season. I sent you his, his, his no, but, stats. Yeah, but of course... I, no, but I get it. But I'm trying to say to you, there is elements of him creating four players. Like, Is he like a De Bruyne? No. But there is that element of he can create. He can create from deep. That's what a deep line play makes. Doesn't create say no. He's Cruz. Cruz, Say, go ahead, go ahead, finish. No, I'm saying like you can't be a deep line playmaker. That means you get the ball from from the. But he's not a cruise. And also, doesn't. No, man, Cruz is miles. Cruz, you can get the ball, receive it from deep, and then give the ball and progress the ball quickly. Like we need players that can progress but he the doesn't, ball. You just quickly. said progress and the ball quickly. He's not that okay. He's not a transition football player. When he left Ajax, they they switched their their style of play to transition football. Everyone who I think it was you, Adam, that one time we sat here and we talked about it. We were talking about Ten Hag in his last year of Ajax switching from being a possession based team to, to a transition style team. He said he wants to play transition football because he's in the Premier League. You're going to get one of the, the 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 midfielders, one of the slowest midfielders in Europe when it comes to ball progressing, because he doesn't. Uh, someone, to, I think Sam told me this. Sam was like, he cool controls. With that. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that, man. No, 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 Saeed. No, it's quick. not cool with that. No, Saeed, you can't say you want to play transition yeah, football and get get a player we're not who transition football. Though. We're not going to play that. We're not going to play Saeed, that. But that's what he's trying to do, and this is the closest. This is the closest you are to. Do you want to? Yeah, but so you. You want to go to possession-based football when you have most of your players set up for transition. That's the, You're talking about a whole different reset of this team right now. No, because but the, what you're missing in that midfield, is it, it, to complete this midfield, is, a, is, is as, as I said, a box-to-box. If you want to play possession-based, 
you can't even be playing with the 10 because you're going to have to get rid of Bruno because he doesn't like the uh, play position. And even if you're going to get an eight, you can't get an eight like Frankie De Jong because he doesn't offer a lot in the final third. He likes to control the tempo of the game. He doesn't... Pe people say... Oh, he controls the game. He doesn't control the game. He likes to play at his own tempo. He's one of the slowest players in Europe when releasing the ball. He's control of the game, though. That's his, no, that is control no, of the Saeed, game. But, but that's not... Okay, they're smart players that know how to speed up and slow down the game. He plays the game at one speed only, which is slow. When you watch him... And, and that's one criticism Barcelona oh, fans with right. overhand. Right. So, wallahi, I'm not even joking. I think I, I'll tell you what. Okay. YouTube, go go watch YouTube after we're done with this and just go at his press. Ah, people used to... Games. I actually people, watch his games. I actually watch people games. used to praise, on, him, praise him, Saeed, for his safe passing. He's one of the safest passers. And that's actually very good. When Adam's saying he's one of the best footballers in, in, in uh, sorry, one of the midfielders in Europe, in terms of that, I agree with that because he is a poor, pure footballer. But what he get, brings to this team is not what we need. He would literally slow us down as a team. He would slow uh, down the midfield. He would actually down. bring us back because of what he does versus what we need. I don't think he would still. Before you go, Adam. Before you go, Adam. Before you go, I'm going to read a couple of super chats. DM yeah. and M M F. Big issues for me. Frank De Jong is neither. Adi Wallace says Casemiro, minor Frank De Jong, best midfield in the league. This um, is the worst midfield. Nicholas possible. says our Barca fan. He's on 700k, no deferred wage. And Adi Wallace says the guy don't watch to Frank De Jong. He's an all-round midfielder. He can create as well, and he can press and can be defensive. He will retain <laughs> position. Guys, can, before Adam, yeah, Adam, you go ahead. Did you? What are you going to disagree with there? Yeah, the, the, the whole transition thing. The comments that I did uh, last summer about transition. I think people got it all wrong. I think people think transition is gig and press football. But any type of football involves transition. You can be a yeah. counter-attacking team, but you can be one of the very best in transition because the moment the opposition loses the ball, you're the very best at hitting them. That is a transition. You can be a possession-based team and being very good in transition and very bad in transition. Like mm -hmm. City are very good. The moment they, rest, they recycle the ball, they're very good at getting in shape and getting it moving. And uh, Jurgen Klopp and the, the German managers in general or gig and pressing managers, and they are very good in transition as well because the way they counter press and they exploit the space immediately after the opposition lose, lose position is very good in transition. So people, you can be good in transition regardless of the type of football you play. So I think this is something that the entire fan base have got, uh, has got, uh, got wrong, to be honest. Transition is there regardless of what type of football you play. You cannot go without... And transition is going from defending... To attacking, okay. No, no it, it doesn't mean it doesn't no, mean going on, from on, your back on. line to their hold back on, line. Hold on, hold on. Transition is going from one state to another. Exactly. So going from defending yeah, to going attacking. Those no, are the two stages, from one no? State to another, from one state to another. So it can be going back from a defensive to an attacking shape, and That's vice what versa. I just said. And vice versa, it could be you, you just it's just getting back in in shape in getting the the system you want in place as quick as possible. And he didn't want. He, he, I don't think Tanak said he wanted to be. A transition team he wanted yes, he to did. he said, said he, he wants to play transition football no exactly he said he wanted to be one of the best team in transition I yeah think and he said and he mentioned something about playing fast wingers because that's united united united's identity exactly, everything that he's saying has nothing to do with the recruitment he's making no no fine, fine. No, i was making mistakes but what i'm trying to say is you can be very very quick pacey in transition if you are jose Mourinho, because that's what he did his entire career with pacey wingers as well it just it doesn't have to be possession football. This is mm, so that's what I'm saying. Big up to big up to Adewale says um Casemiro, Frank De Jong, and Minor can work. Casemiro gets GA. Minor's actually decent in front of the goal and passes well. We don't really we don't ne really need Frank De Jong to get GA. He adds control and ball retention. There's I zero creativity in that midfield. Hold on, Bruno, Bruno, do something, Bruno. Yeah, you know I mean, like, but that's why I'm saying for me, yeah, I think United. You go and get a, a Xavi Simmons, yeah? You go and get Frank De Jong. You go and get Kobe Minor. Then you go and get maybe adding there a, a, a physical specimen. Maybe, I don't know. Who's who's out there that, apart from Paulinho, that yeah, can how, get, how much money do you think we got, bro? Oh, no, yeah, yeah, box okay, to okay, box. Okay, I don't really rate. Oh, no, no. You know yeah, what's yeah, all this money coming from? The young Simons, another midfielder. We don't got money. Said like thinks he's still on career mode. Said we're, we're no, on no, say no, TV. No, no, we turned off. We turned off. Okay, okay. You could go get Eze. You could go get Eze. What I'm trying to say to you, yeah. Is that if you add spend correctly, how much is um Shavi Simmons gonna cost you? Around about 40 million, 50 million? Is it gonna cost you a lot of money? Shavi Simmons? He's definitely gonna cost more than okay. that. More than that, more than that. Oh, this is... Okay, okay, okay. Uh Onana, how much is he gonna cost you, Onana? 60. 60 Six, million. And how much is how much is um yeah. how much is um thinking gonna cost you? How much is thinking gonna cost you? What's his name? Uh, the last player that I mentioned. 
Eze. Eze's going to cost another 50 60. No, no, I didn't mention Eze. Did I mention Savvy Simmons? To, um, Onana and who else? Frankie De Jong. Frankie De Jong. Yeah, Frankie Fra- De Jong. Yeah, Frankie yeah, yeah, De Jong. Yeah, Frankie De Jong. Yeah. Yeah. Kimmich as well. What about Kimmich? Does anybody rate Kimmich? I bet you lot don't rate Kimmich. Stop. Yeah, I'd rather have the Young class. I'd rather have the Young class. I'd rather have the Young and Kimmich. You need to understand that I, it's not that I'm not rating players. I'm oh, exactly. saying what we need. I'm going based on what we need because I rate what we have right now in Kobe Mina and I'm trying to build the midfield for the future. I'm not trying to make the same mistakes we did with Pogba. Yeah. So when but, I'm sitting here, lacking, I'm complaining about his physicality, complaining about his 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 final third um, GA, and complaining about his uh, his defensive attributes. This is not me not rating him because I said he's probably one of the best in the world at what he does, which is progressing the ball. But I'm saying this is not what we need. Why would I go get something that I don't need? I don't think Anana is, is what we need, but I'll be honest with you. Can... Anana might have the physicality, but the guy can't even play out in the back, bro. He's oh, look, this, this is the, the thing. He's gash. Can he's I gash say, yeah? You know, I think if you have a physical midfielder like Anana, personally, I like Anana in it. I liked him before he went to Everton, but he ain't the only option. You could get Yusuf Fafana, you can get Kamara, both of them at Monaco right now, but I would Kamara, lean more yeah, towards, I'd, I'd lean more towards Fafana for sure. Um, but I think the thing is, we're all talking. We're sitting here talking about should we get a Frankie Dionga and create. We're arguing about creative. We just spent sixty million on Mason Mount. If we are going out to buy a midfielder, we should be buying a physical midfielder. We should not be focusing you, on man. ball playing attributes. We should be focusing on the physicality, the engine, the life How of the midfield. Because in transition, can I just say in transition? Yeah, because we're talking about the transition football. If we're if, if it's Frankie Dionga, he can do it from deep. That's not a problem. He's he's a great passer from yeah. from deep. Yeah, but if you've got an engine in the midfield and you've got Mason Mount or Bruno Fernandez who are equally well good on the ball, then it shouldn't be something that we should really be arguing about. I think, like I said, Frankie De Jong, I think he's a phenomenal player. I think he was something that Ten Hag maybe could have done with two years ago. But I feel like Ten Hag's um the, the Ten Hag's philosophy in the in the football that he wanted to build kind of regressed when Manchester United went and brought Casemiro. So now exactly. they need to find a replacement for Casemiro because exactly. that's the direction that the team have chosen to go down. Frankie De Jong would have been good the summer that Ten Hag came, but I think now he's he's not that. Ten Hag said it best. He said, "I can't get Frankie De Jong, so I'm going to create my own." He created his Frankie De Jong, so he don't need him no more. That's yeah, what I'm saying. saying here I'm saying, no, but... but but the manager fell on his head as well. No, no, hold on a minute. Who's, who's that Frankie De Jong that he created? Menu. Kobe Menu. He, he didn't create Kobe Menu. Well, Kobe Menu was born before crazy, Ten Hag came. He didn't create him, but like, yeah, he, that's like, what I'm he, introduced, he introduced like that kind of player into the team. We 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 got uh, the young from home. That's what he's basically saying. We don't yeah, have to we buy have one. Just had one. Copy Mano. I know where they similar. Yeah, no, it's because Mano is better. Mano does what he does, Said, but he does more, more similar. similar than Allah, Allah, Allah. That's the first thing. Oh, more similar. similar relax, than yeah, yeah, yeah. Relax, 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 what? Said, why relax, are you shocked at the stuff that I'm saying, Said? Stuff it. Relax. Said, listen. Allah, Said, listen to me. Said, I need you to understand something. You, you need to know. You don't have my channel lately. You don't have my channel lately. No, no, no. I will never say something absurd. That's a better take than what happened on Wednesday. Said, I will never have an absurd take like the De Bruyne one. That De Bruyne one, I won't replicate. But, but listen to me. What I'm trying to explain. Look what you said, though. Said, 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 I'm explaining the profile of players. Menu, what he has as the player that he is, is much more than what De Jong does. De Jong in his in his career right now, yes, he's a much more mature footballer, and he does what he's good at much better than Menu because Menu is a team. I'm not saying Menu at this moment is a better player than 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 De Jong, but what he can offer on the ball with the future that he has, he's gonna give us nah, much more. He's man. gonna. He, 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 he has more man. He's he's not not man. Allah, Said, De Jong hasn't even De Jong has not progressed since he left Ajax. You need to understand that. Bro, he has not progressed. He has. I got it, bro. There is literally. Okay, so. So prove me wrong. He's said best midfielder. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not better than Pedri. There is no. Pedri is the star boy. No, 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 no. Hold on a minute. I'm talking about in the in the midfield. I said like the midfield two. We're talking about Gundogan. We're talking about him. We're talking about the guys that play in the midfield two. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, but Pedri's more further forward. Pedri can do that oh, too. Pedri can, drop deep. He can play, Pedri can play sick, can do that, dropping deep. He can play the eight and he can play the ten because he's better in advanced areas. 
You guys just like to go for big names, bro. I most of these guys have don't, don't even watch name, Barcelona, bro. Okay, so so so, 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 so no, he's a big name side. Quality who has a big attributes. Manchester United need a midfielder that can get on the ball and make things happen and make things. Yes, and you have one lying right now, Say you have one right now. I'm fed up of Cobby's from the academy, bro. Cobby's something that relaxes himself. Like we're, we're, we're almost thinking that he's already done. Like, so like I, I didn't say he's Zidane, Zidane, but you have. I that feel like what you're doing is now. Yeah, but you're you're putting Cobby and saying, "Yo, he he's here right now, and he's a future." I get that, yeah, but also. De Jong is someone that can compliment and guide as well. Kobe Mino. you know, you know, he you know, know, know we need we need someone to guide him next. Do they complement each other? I really want to know what way do they complement? No, no, no. I'm talking about right, in the way so. they play, into the way where the style is, and and what they can I learn from. I think Kobe Mino having someone there that can play, he can play with. Ophi, but the thing is as well, yeah. United have also got to find a way that we can play without. Bruno Fernandes. I think what we're talking about right now is maybe we're thinking too much Bruno Fernandes in the hole, so we then have to then not get Bruno and Forget De Jong Bruno. together. Bruno has nothing to do with this conversation. That's what we're doing. We're do this conversation. Forget the 10. In a pivot, if we're going to play with the pivot, how do you, how, how do you as a manager, be able to play Kobe Manu and Frankie De Jong in a pivot and make it work? That. Okay, okay. It, it so, depends on how you want yeah, to play yeah. football. It depends on how you want yeah. to play football. Because this is my point. This is not the right we need to address the right things to start with because people say since the since the show started say you need bruno as a creator goal scoring chances this that you have kobe who is similar to frankie de young who like progresses the ball and is very smart and intelligent in his movement and then you have an engine a physical freak like casemiro or someone like that and we need to replace him and since you have those three aspects the midfield is balanced is incomplete but that is not true the midfield is balanced and complete when when it fits the way you want to play. Because you can have a midfield of Gundogan, David Silva, and Bernardo Silva, who are none of them are above six feet. None of them are physical freaks. And you yeah. cannot... Don't, you can't you can compare play. yourself to City. We don't play the football City plays. No, but, 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 you but, want to be like them, though? No, no. Is he trying to be like them? We're not trying to be like them, Is that not a standard? Is that not a standard, though? What you want as a team? We do not have Pep. You can't play Man City football unless you're Pep Guardiola. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, it's not a bench spot. When you're watching these plays, you're like, oh, man, I wish they played for us. I wish they... even Arteta, the closest thing to Pep was in that race. What I said, well, saying, also, Arteta, wait, Arteta's the Adam, closest thing to Pep Wait, one Gundogan. second, Grace, I'm oh, sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Just finish my point. Mustafi, you said, we can't play City because we don't play like that. And I said exactly my point. We need to address what type of football to start with. If I already have... know what he's trying to play, Adam. I see it. I see he's trying to be more like a Liverpool than he's trying to be like a City. It's evidential. Yeah, but, but not necessarily. Not necessarily. This is what I. This is my, my he, point. He, Another thing, maybe he won't stay as well. So my point, I'm not disagreeing with with not wanting Frankie de Jong. I'm saying the first thing you need to answer is what football, which elements. Because people think that you need someone to be there defensive and to hold the back four. It depends. One man cannot be in charge of defending an entire midfield. An entire That's field. not what we said, Adam. All three of us agreed that we need a box to box. Let's say for the last two games. Steffi, just, just a second. Come on, man. Let him land. Let him land. Let him land. The last two games, for example, we started creating more and started scoring more. Why? Because we have better players at the back. Because Casemiro and Shaw and Martinez are back. So you don't, you don't need to have creative players to create more chances. You need to have a team working. It's, it, yeah. it, it happens all the time. And like, it happened you. with Sir Alex Ferguson in, in the past. We needed a goal, so he would bring on Carrick. He wouldn't bring on a striker. He would bring on someone to have the team play better. And this, this is my point. What football do you want to play? And then you can start. Because me saying we need Frankie de Jong... The, it doesn't make as much it doesn't make sense just as much as we're saying we need an engine because we don't know what type of football we want to play. I think we are both wrong. We don't know. I'm gonna bring in Marcel because I've not heard from Marcel in a bit. Let me just get a couple of super chats in here. Big up to Louis. Is it Louis G? Mina takes literally takes the words out of my mouth. We need physicality in the six and a decent ball retainer who can tackle and recycle the ball. Big up to Louis for the super chat. And big up to Adiwale as well. Generous donation. Always, my guy. Big up to you, my bro. This is a problem I have with United fans. Just because we have Kobe does not mean we shouldn't get De Jong. Facts. Same way we, we need a striker. Stop worrying what will happen to Hoyland. It's like we don't want him. We just want our, our favourites to play. Is that is that a good point there? Because I, I made that point with Bruno Fernandes. It's like, we, we shouldn't want this player because then I mean Bruno Fernandes will stay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. bro, I want to see Casemiro be... 
like be, be kind of put down because maybe a better player comes in in that position, like and yeah. shows Casemiro up. Like I want competition for places, and I feel like for me there is it's a good super chat in that in that point. But talk to me, uh, Marcel, in terms of the balance and how it could work with certain players. Talk to me, bro. So, so just on that super chat, there's a squad game. So you want strength and depth. You want more than one player, you know, doing that one specific type of role. I really like what Adam's saying in terms of, you know, the multiple, the, the, the multiple options or realities that we could do with in terms of what style of football we want to play. Now, originally I've said Anana. And if you want to go through that physical side of things, I mentioned it. Anana is the guy that you want for that in terms of the box to box dynamic. But if you're going to go back to what Ten Hag naturally wants, his idea in my mind of the perfect DM is a Frankie de Jong. I know Staffy kind of said he only is he only works best in that second phase and it doesn't offer much in the first and the and the third phase, but I heavily disagree with that. Frankie de Jong is excellent and a master in the first and the second phase. He can yeah. play in centre back as well and, and he's done that and been able to carry the ball through the thirds. So that's when you have by the way um um the Griggs you have Cobby a little bit ahead of that. So that's how you get it to work. You have Frankie de Jong specifically carrying the ball for the first two thirds and let's see Kobe, you know, a little bit in front of him because, again, the structure that we'd like to play is that single six with the two eights. That's what Ten Hag was obsessed with when all the, before all the injuries started killing our team. It was, a, it was a system where we wanted one single guy to have the ball. Now, in terms of the physicality and the Premier League and ra-ta-ra, when we look at the top level of football, Barcelona didn't have no physical presence in their midfield. Small, weak footballers that understand the we game. Into... Hold on, please, Briggs. Hold on, please. Please, small technical footballers with just Sergio Busquets in there, um, being able to dictate the ball. That he's not a physical specimen, you know. Again, was just was just a very clever player that passed through the thirds and can see in a nanosecond. You know, and this, and with the skies, and then you've got Iniesta and Javi again that can see in a nanosecond passing the ball with the skies. They're not physical bullies. Okay, yes, that's the Spanish league, and this is the Premier League, but um, Pep's been able to emulate something similar. Um, and and then in terms of creativity in a midfield, I've seen Liverpool just have dogs in there, workmen like midfielders. So it depends what style of football again that you would like to play. Um, I think Ten Hag, if he's able to. I feel like, again, I mentioned it last time, there was a bit of, I feel like there's a bit of influence at the top in terms of what style of football he was saying he wanted to play. And penultimately, um, Adam, I think he said hybrid football was the word. He actually still wants to have some of his Ajax essence, but with the transition football that, you know, our DNA and our culture is obsessed with. So I think he was always trying to blend the two and and and, and marinate the two. This and with the transition true. element, what Man United are very good at right now with Rashford and Bruno in the side, that's what you're seeing most of, that that transition element from a counter-attacking standpoint. But it's still always his plan A to have the triangles and to dominate and control the football. Mm -hmm. Ten Hag, um, not Ten Hag, Frankie de Jong can help that element. It's very, very simple to me. If you can get a never football, if he's available, like I said, Saeed, at the top of this, if he's available and he wants to come, it's a no-brainer. Add him to your squad and get rid of the Scott McTominays that can't help in certain elements or that you then, then you bring on Anna for your box-to-box -box because he's perfect and he's physical. But it's a squad game, guys. I, I can't... Why we're hating on Frankie de Jong is, is silly to me. Very silly. It, 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 exactly. Uh, it's a squad game, like you said. Can I respond? Go ahead, Bear. First of all, you just can compare De Jong and the way he can influence with Manu to Javi, Iniesta, and Busquets, by the way, which is the greatest midfield three the sport will ever see. First of all, there is no other Sergio Busquets in world football. There probably will not be another Sergio Busquets. And that's he's very, two, by the way. That's, that's, that's very two, naive. Way. That's, that's first of all, he's, naive. That's first of all, he's six foot two. So to say he's not physical at six foot two is crazy. Get, and also the ball manipulation that Javi, Iniesta, and Sergio Busquets have had is something that we have not seen since them. And I, Frankie De Jong cannot. Haven't watched much football in your existence, my friend. Javi <laughs> Iniesta this football, goes, this football goes in cycles. In recent so football, you're, 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 you're speaking who like no, no, no. Who to Iniesta in terms of ball manipulation? You can speak to somebody Javi twenty years football. from now, and they will, they will, they will, they will. Forget no, twenty years from now, right now, right now, prior, and they will right articulate now. similar right style now. of football. Of right now, right control. now, who can chat to Iniesta? Who can right now in football? Who can chat to Iniesta, Busquets, and Javi when it comes to on the ball ball manipulation? No one. You, you, what he said, he said. He Verratti. Verratti. Pedro. Verratti can. Verratti can. No, what he said. Verratti can. Verratti can. David Silva. David Silva. No, 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 no
What you're Marcel is saying? You're young. Chris, 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 you know, and uh, Verratti, no, there's different no, prototypes no, of players who can manipulate the ball. Profile, she just said Verratti can chat to them in terms of ball manipulation. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, that's a whole different conversation. That's a whole different conversation. But they're talking about prototypes. They're talking about players. Okay, similar okay, so, attributes. okay. So you guys want to play? Okay, so we're gonna play this midfield, right? This this dominant ball dominant midfield, right? So you can have a Kobe, a Frankie, and an and Onana, right? So that's fine. That's a good midfield in terms of if you want to dominate the ball. And then there's not there's not much creativity, but I agree. You don't need much creativity, you don't need to always have the creativity from your midfield. And I'm so earlier, you could have this, you could have the ball progressors from center back, a, a diag over the top. You could have your attackers be GA merchants, like the way Liverpool had with uh Salah and Mane. But we don't have that. That's another thing. They had a trend at right back that's a generational creator from that position. Where are we gonna find that? No, but I think I think what Marcel said, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think he's comparing people to Messi, to Xavi, Iniesta, and Busquets, which I agree is the greatest midfield we've ever seen. I think, we're just, I think we're just comparing yeah. profiles. Like, for example, if you want to dominate the ball, the player that you have that in sixth deepest doesn't have to be defensive. Because you, if you plan on playing with the ball, you cannot give one-tenth of your team to defensive duties because you are therefore playing with one less player. If you go look at the best teams mm -hmm. in position that play with a 4-3-3 with one holding six that is deeper, that player is not defensive because otherwise he wouldn't make any sense in the team. That means you're playing with nine players on the pitch instead of ten outfield broski, players. Broski, broski. Racism is, is a back uh, is a box to box He's winning the ball in his half and then he's going on the other half and he's getting th yeah, three goals well, this season yeah. so far just so what are we talking about no one said no one said so far he is sitting game. six not not a single person here has said that. that he's good at defending and he's, he's good on the ball as well but that's a very good luck for them but Bro, Rice doesn't play. even sit there and dictate the play that's what i'm trying to say and Rice, Rice gets a lot of hate for that Rice gets cooked for not being that great on the ball the guy wins the ball he's very dominant he actually moves the ball well up like he's not great passing, but he's good at dribbling, and then he's always in the box scoring. That's literally what I just described when I when it comes to a box to box. So well, when I'm saying I we need a race, why do people take that as me saying De Jong is shit? I'm not saying De Jong is shit. Is De Jong the type of profile that races? No, oh, I yeah. know that we need a race. Well, well, you know what? We're we're, we're going we're going around in, in circles here. But ultimately, ultimately, and I, and I come to Mino. Ultimately, though. Is this where my United fans are at though? Like in terms of we don't want this, but we need this, but we don't need that. Like it's you know, it's crazy, man. I think as fans, yeah, we're so I don't know, man. I don't know what the word is, but yeah, man. Do, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, Mina, like we're just confused. Yeah, no, I, hear it. I think it's what because we want. I think it's because we're still trying to identify the style of football that the manager's trying to play. And right. that's not and that's no criticism really to the manager, it's just the circumstances that we find ourselves in. I I'm very much on the fence. I'll be honest, guys. I'm on the fence of the idea of Frankie De Jong. It's like, if he comes, I don't think he'll hinder our progression in terms of where the team is going. And if he doesn't come, I'm sure United have a, have another plan in terms of someone in that midfield. But can I just say, what Marcel said is kind of, it kind of puts everything into perspective, in my opinion. I don't think he was comparing, uh, saying, you know, an Iniesta, Xavi, Busquets kind of thing, but they had roles oh. in their team. They had jobs. And essentially, I feel like that's what Marcel was saying. And I agree with him. And I agree with some parts that Staffy said. Not everything. Because he said a few blasphemous stuff. But I don't agree with everything. Please but, tell me what, what, what they are. But okay. you said that Kobe Mano is better than Frankie De Jong. No, I said he's a... So his profile for what he does no, no, so you is said better than what De Jong... You didn't say profile. You said... Kobe I actually Mano said at the moment he's not better. I said he's... He, I said... I actually said the opposite. I said De Jong right now, because of his age and his experience... And what he does so good, he's a better player at the moment. But did what, he say what, that? Guys, did he say that he was better? I just said that. Yeah, Staffy, I can't no, no. lie to you. Well, like, I said, no, 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 hold on. I said you said say, he was better. Say, 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 say the footage is there for what he has. Okay. Yes, his profile okay. of player is better. That's what I said. His profile of player is yeah. better because he can do it on the defensive end. And I sent you a stat, a, a, a screenshot of stats for a reason, Said. Okay. Everything on okay, that on that screenshot because everyone wants to sit here and 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 say no, 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 you're wrong. No, no, no. I think this. I think that. Literally, his career stat shows that he's a liability defensively. And we're sitting here saying, no, I disagree with you. He's good defensively. The only reason he played that as a center back for, for Barca at times is because they sat in games. The, sorry, the opposition sat in games in a low block, and they just needed someone to move up the ball. He was literally there. Just, look at all the greens. He has not, four greens in just passing stats and progressive carries. Look at his defensive. It's all red. Yeah, but the thing is, though, like, but the thing is, though, what ah, we're, what we're, is what we're looking for in the United team. Lie. No, but the thing is, what we're looking for in this United team is 
the progressive passes, is the progressive carries. Like, we're looking for that. We don't have someone that's dynamic enough. I think a lot of you are like a misprofile, even Kobe Mino, man. Like, he's not physical enough for me. He can't carry the ball for me as much as what De Jong will be able to do. I think he's good in tight spaces. That, I think he's developing. Young but I don't think he's an athlete that, that, that people think he is. Like, everyone thinks he's some, you know what I mean? Like, this crazy, can, like, you know, athlete say? football. He's not. He's developing. He's very, very technical. And that's why I believe him and, and Mino could work in that team. And then if you had Bruno or Matt, whoever was in there, then you can compliment in that way. But, you know, I, I just find it absolutely blasphemous that when yeah, we're not so, considering... Can I just say, sorry to interrupt you. You see these stats, yeah? Can we also take into account that he's in a ball-dominant team that are yeah, going to yeah. be majority... Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. So it's very exactly. it's extremely naive what I'm hearing is saying his entire career suggests... When he's been playing in ball dominant teams, my brother, that, this is average. That, 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 please do not interrupt me. Can you please? Uh, no, this is a good bit. What do you mean, don't interrupt me, bro? This is ridiculous. This is average. Let him, let him yeah, let, let him, him land. Let him land them, man. Them. Come on, we got we got to hear each other out, guys. We got to hear each other out. It's like, listen to this guy Come for on, ten guys. minutes patience, before I, I get a word in. Patience is bro. a virtue. Please keep your mouth shut and let me finish. No, don't tell me what to do. Yeah, master, 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 master. You, you, you're master, master at this. But you got to land, land your point, land your point, bro. Master, because you walk for ten minutes and I'm not allowed to speak, bro. I don't want to plan my point now because no, we don't stop know. Stop it, stop it. Let him land this point. Miller, Miller, come back That's in the, the picture. Exercise Miller, silence. Stop laughing, Miller. Stop exercise laughing. Silence. Right. Everyone here. It's not everyone. Why is my channel? Why is my channel? Read what it says. It's, channel, what it lack says. Of, it's lack of order, man. But guys, order. And it's order. naivety and guys, that he's making based on and, and, and saying it's the whole career. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But anyway, I won't say anything more on it. It's clear for the viewers to see. Okay, now Staffy, you land back and you give your point, bro. I have nothing to say, bro. The same viewers that you're talking about, they're the same ones that call you a waffler every show, bro. So if you want to go by views, they call you a waffler every listen, show. Listen, let's let's not go. Let, you know, it's about Staffy. We don't want to get personal in here. I'm not getting personal, about, bro. It's just like you tell me to shut my mouth, bro. This is what is this a debate yeah, yeah, yeah. show? Or no, is no, this no, the that, Marcel show? Right well. It's like I have to no, always you know listen to him for ten minutes you know before I speak. Yeah. I feel like for me, yeah, people need to understand, yeah, when you have an opinion, yeah, that's you your that opinion. Last show, you said that was the Marshall show and that you were silent for time. And I didn't say anything that yeah. show two weeks, two weeks ago. And you was very incorrect. <laughs> stop it, Safi. <laughs> so why did you stop why did you know Briggs no, 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 no. Why did you, you know Briggs when he was speaking? Time out, time out. Time out, time out, time out, time out. So you know what it is, yeah? I've just had enough, man. I've got random <laughs> talk, traps, and um, and Neji. And now we're just going to have a time out. Yeah, just 10 seconds. Everybody relax. Blue cards in the chat. Blue cards in the chat. You know what I'm saying to you? Let me bring someone else's point of view. Griggs, uh, I want to wrap up this point of view because I want to move over to Colby Mino and the contract situation. Big up to you, man. Them. Listen, we want to keep this respectful, man, yeah? Let's go on to the Kobe Minor situation. Is the contract coming too early? Michael, chat to us, bro. Uh, I don't. I mean, I can see both like angles. I can see why people think it's too early because we've done this before, like where a kid is just signing right, and then we just like up the up the wages and that kind of stuff. But I've heard that like the last contract, the last contract that he signed expires in like two years. So United just want to kind of just get ahead of that. Don't don't let anything like happen down a chance. So I hear that. I hear why they would want to just get it done now. I do agree that he deserves like a little bit more of a raise because let's be serious. Like I know people think he's young and all that kind of stuff, but he has been one of the best performers this season in the club when he's played in the last like three months, in my opinion. He deserves a little bit higher of the wages. But I don't I just hope like it's not like something crazy like north of a hundred thousand. Not trying to like pocket watch or anything, but kind of where Garnacho's at. I think Garnacho's like at fifty thousand, right? When he got right when he got the yeah. contract last year. Just keep it like that for the next two, three years, and then we'll obviously go on from there. But it's a good thing to just get him out of that academy contract that he's on, like the first pro contract that's still kind of a little bit of academy and pro, and just go from there. So it's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree, man. You know what it is with me? And I'll come to you in the next slide. Some players are just humble, in it? And I feel like he's not a kid that I think will get too big for his boots. I think, you know what, man, he's, he's grounded. He comes from a humble background. You know, I, I, I don't see any 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 anything wrong with this. I'm 50,000 a week. It's not for me, not too bad. You know what I mean? He can obviously... But you know, the only thing is, a lot of people said his contract doesn't run out until 2028. So why are we, why are we thinking about this deal right now? Like, is that a concern for you? Or are you just kind of like, it is what it is, isn't it? Like, his agent, I reckon this is probably more from his agent thinking, yo, this is the best time to go get a deal, you know, and get your money up right now because we're, we're so poor. You, you do well, you, you get rewarded. Like anybody that has a job, like you do well at work, 
you get a pay raise. So uh, it's, football ain't really any different. And I think Garnacho got it after a breakout season last year. And also, I think it's a bit of incentive for academy players that are coming through now or over the next year or two, where if they break into the first team and secure a spot, whether it's a Lacey, whether it's, uh, you know, a Mass, whoever it is, if they break into the first team, then they know, OK, I'll get a, a nice bump up in my in my in my pay rise and also commitment you look at was it not West Ham that had I think Declan Rice on a on his first pro contract until pretty much when they sold him and they were struggling to negotiate with him because his he knew his value as time went on and the club were trying to tie him down long term if they had tied him down long term after he made his you know first or second year appearance in the senior team I don't think they would have really struggled to 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 get a uh, give him a bigger contract and keep him at the club so I don't see anything with it at the end of the day football players play for incentive they they play for wins, but they also play for incentives. If a young player is performing and you want to create a, a philosophy in an academy where, you know, to encourage players to try and break into the first team and then, you know, you show them stuff like this. You show them, unfortunately, the the Marcus Rashford's. You show them the Garnachos. You show them the Kobe Manos. And hopefully it'll get to a point where United do have to go out in the summer transfer windows and buy players uh, under Ineos. But also they'll be able to progress a lot more players through the academy. And, you know, we can, you know, we don't have to think about, I don't know, filling Luke Shaw's spot because we've got an answer for that in the academy. So it's it's all about incentive. It's all about incentive. Mm. Does, does anybody think the situation with Rashford and Kobe Mano are different? Like, did we all think that Rashford was humble? You know, when he was when he was obviously, you know what I mean, becoming what he was today. Does anyone think it's similar or they're different? Like I'll go with you, Griggs, first in that one. Like, do you think it's similar or do you think it's different? In like what? In terms of what? In terms of like, you know, because we all thought that Rashford, you know, it would be a situation where, you know, he we wouldn't be kind it. of like chained by the money or whatnot, and da 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 da. And obviously he became a bit kind of like, you know, stalling contracts and whatnot. Is it different or do you believe it's Kobe Mino like deserves it? In that aspect, I mean, I think he deserves it, but like, we don't know what the future holds, right? Like, I yeah. think Marcus Rashford, the way he's acted with like the contract and the stalling, if United were a better team, he probably would have never stalled, right? He would have just he would have put pen to contract right away. But the fact that United haven't been competing for the major honors, he's hitting the age now where he wants to start competing for those major honors. He's in what twenty six, so he's nearing that age soon where he, like he needs to start adding uh, trophies to your cabinet, right? For any legacy that you want to build, I'm sure if we're still at this level in two three years time, right? When it comes time for Kobe Mayne to sign the next contract, he might be like, especially if he has like, let's say, let's say he hits his peak, the potential, right, that we gas him up to hit. We're gonna have some big clubs trying to come in for him, right? And if we're not good at that yeah. point, if we're not competing, he might look at us and be like, I, you guys, you guys were the one that gave me my career, but sometimes I just have to move on. So I think the future, the future will tell what happens in terms of like contracts and like the humble little in terms of stalling contracts. You just right now you put his, you put pen to pen to paper for this one. And then just see what happens in the future. Is this, is this our best talent, do you reckon, since I would say Mason Greenwood, like in terms of ability, you know, do you think this is our best kind of talent that's come through the academy? Like proper talent where he could fit in most top six teams, like where he could actually play like proper minutes. Like, do we believe he's our best talent? Or do you think one of them were still got to be grounded in the aspect? Like, what are you guys thinking? I'll go with that, I guess. I think for me, I think I said, I've tweeted this before. I said he's the type of player that can start for every midfield in this league, even from right now, except Manchester City, because obviously they're just levels above everyone mm -hmm. else, right? But every other midfield, every other midfield, I think he could start. I think he's the perfect profile for a midfielder in the modern day of football. He's athletic mm -hmm. enough where he could play, like, he, he could do like the box to box on the ball. He's just brilliant. Ball striking, he showed against Wolves how he can strike a ball at that age. Not, I don't think most of our forwards can have that kind of finish that he had against Wolves. And they're meant to be the ones that score the goals, right? Like, ask Anthony to do that shot. He's sending it about 80 yards wide. Ask Garnacho to do that shot. He probably can't do it at that kind of level. So the ability is there. Um, Obviously, stuff can happen in football. But if he can hit the ceiling that he um that he could do, I think that's the best midfield talent. And um, I think uh, Mason, Greenwood is diff different because Greenwood had one had one uh, what's it called attribute the finishing the ball striking that was just like mm -hmm. generational like it's very that's a very rare talent but all around game for his position I think when it comes to like midfielder and forward I think Manu 
is a better all around talent mm -hmm. at his position. The green ones, I'd probably say the best is Pogba. Yeah, in that, in that yeah, man. We had obviously Pogba, we had Angel Gomez, man. Angel Gomez was a quality player, man. But yeah, I don't know why it just didn't work out, man. Oli, listen, I'll ever for, forget about Oli, man. Oli killed him, man. Like he could have played him in the team, but he didn't play him. Rafa Morrison, obviously, for course, man. But obviously, he had his own issues to sort out and whatnot. But yeah, man, like big up to Kobe Mino, man. Listen, he's doing his thing, man. So, you know what I mean? We salute him. Absolutely. Big up to everyone here, man. Make sure you're not liking the video. There's over 600 in the building. Uh, I don't think we've even hit 300 likes yet. So, guys, if you're watching right now, we should be hitting the likes up, man. Big up to everyone here. Big up to Ash in the building. But we've got a big game, man, over the weekend, guys. We have got a massive, massive game. I mean, Adam, man, how big a game is this for you, man? We win the game, five points behind Aston Villa. Lose the game, 11, and it's done for me. Anybody who thinks, well, we're, you know, the, the, the top four is still there. I think this is a game where, is it for you, Adam, must win or must not lose? No, it's must win. I'm fed up of not winning, man. Yeah. You know, even a draw at this point is just... Uh, because the wins are not convincing. They are very... It's rare that our wins actually, like, feel good. The losses mm. feel terrible. The draws feel terrible. The wins feel... Uh, so... <laughs> It's just we, we need to win. We, we can't really have, we don't have any other op option but to win, to be honest. And I'm not that confident because the last mm -hmm. few games have been better, but the ball was so low that let's say the last few games were four out of ten. It just it feels so mm -hmm. nice because the previous months were like minus three. So we have like a different uh, differ differential of seven, <laughs> where just because we were so shit. <laughs> so, so, mm -hmm. bad. so I think it's must win. And I want to see. I want to see good performances. I want to see good football. I want to see structure. I want to see oh. make things making sense. But I don't think uh, is it Marcel that said that he wanted the Ten Hag wanted to keep like the Ajax essence with the U United spirit and Bruno and Rashford. And when you're trying to do two different things, you end up doing none of them. You need to go all in in one. It's like when Ole first got the job, people were saying he was like a mix between Sir Alex and Pep. I was like, the moment I heard that, I was I, I, I that means he's neither of those. <laughs> that means we are in trouble for years to come. That's what it means. So I don't know. I really don't know. I, I uh, think this must win. I'm not confident. You know what's mad, yeah? Obviously, big up to Marcel, but he's always confident, man. This guy, yeah, comes in and says, obviously, we're going to win. Obviously, last time when we were playing Wolves, I didn't think we we're going to win. You came in, you said it, but it's like, you know what it is with me, though? This game here, even though Aston Villa have been poor lately, though, you can't take it lightly, you know, Marcel, you know. I know you're confident in that, but they still have a structure to their team. They still have a plan, still have good players. I think they're 11. You know what I mean? Let's be honest, man. It's as good as ours, apart from maybe their back line. The midfield is probably arguably more balanced than ours. I think their attack is still good as well. Like, yo, man, I think it's going to be a serious game, man. Yes, serious yes. game, man. Entertaining yeah. game as well. Yes, I, I agree with you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quoted as a waffler now, according according to some. So I won't go with, with my waffle, but I'll still talk about what I think and believe, Said, because last game I said that we would beat oh. West Ham and everybody on the panel said, you know, that I would, that we wouldn't win and there was no way of us winning. And mm -hmm. I gave positive reasons, not waffle, as to why we could win and facts as to why we could win. And then lo and behold, we won at Old Trafford. But I will continue to waffle. Of course, because that's what, you know, people are trying to dictate to me, trying to say, OK, no problem. So this game against Aston Villa, their last four home games, even though they've won, lost, even though they've lost one game at home all season, their last four mm. home games haven't been brilliant. Side. I mean, a couple three one mm. losses against the top six sides and Newcastle and Chelsea, a draw against Sheffield. And then I think there is a win in there. There is a win in there. But, you know, they, they haven't been brilliant at home. Um so th there's positives in that. Yeah, they've played they've midweek lost, as well. They have been brilliant, but they've lost two or three games now this yeah. season at home. Yeah, now. so 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 it's up to them now. Last season they finished um seventh, and it's up to yeah. Emery now to say, look, this is the kick on moment for us that we're going to have a challenge and kick on to that, you know, get the fourth position, fifth position. But this could also be their downturn period. You know, Chelsea mm. bullied them to a degree. I think Conte's not there, so they're not going to be defensive. They're mostly going to have. Uh, Moreno and Cash so they're going to mm. try and attack us but Chelsea bullied them in that midfield area it's, out, it's about Bruno De, uh, Fernandes being better than that Luis and Kamara partnership and, and us winning that, mm. that battle and I think we can score goals we've seen our front three score a lot of goals like I mentioned against West Ham and our chances of winning against West Ham is because the front three is scoring in the last four or five games Newport okay, you know, some people don't want to count Newport but in the Premier League we've been scoring goals on the other hand 
Said, and I'm more optimistic yeah. than 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 positive or, co- or unconfident. But it's like, on the other hand, we've got some downsides to this. If if Maguire and Anana yeah. play, there's going to be mistakes co- conceded here. You know, we saw again in the last game Maguire making mistakes. Anana naturally this season, I think he's a top goalkeeper, but he's uncomfortable. He looks shaky there every time a shot comes up at him. I'm worried. So there's a potential yeah. there for mistakes. I think the best partnership now that Martinez has gone is going to be Kambuala and Varane. That should be the partnership that we should be playing throughout the rest of the season, in my opinion. But too I'm a soon, waffle. man. Too soon for Kambuala, man. Too soon yeah, for yeah. Kambuala. Like I know he's oh, had a few good games, that. but what is a different level of striker, man? To 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 let to go up to there, Kambuala to put him in there. I think is is crazy, man. I still think. Listen, I don't think Maguire. You know, when I start him every week, but he's 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 not that game against West Ham was still a strong game, man. Him and Varane can still do a job for me at the back. But again, you probably need pace, maybe in that kind of sense you put Kwambala, but I don't know if he's ready just yet, you know. I'll be real with you. I don't think he's I, I ready think, just yet. I think I think what you know, a lot of I was I'm an advocate of getting rid of Varane, but I'm but I would be there's only one element yeah. where I'm an advocate of keeping him is if he's able to reduce that price and 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 be able to like Assist the younger yeah. players coming through, a Kambuala and that. So, yeah, mm. I think I think Varane yeah, is different man. class. Me, I think Varane is different class. I think you need him to stay. Man, mm. I, I would go with Evans and Varane to be honest. I, I like Kambuala. I like what I've seen from him, but I like Evans and Varane. And I think we need experience at this point. Mm. You know what it is? Yeah, big up United. If you said Marcel wants a young buck in that, <laughs> but you know what it is though. I feel like it's one of them where. With Kwambala, yeah, I think people just need to relax. Like, Varane is the, still the guy. Like, you know, for me, if Varane was dropped in this game, man, I seriously, man, I think that's one of them where you've got to pack your bags and go, man. Yeah, like, you know, I can't be having that anymore, man. If he's dropped for this game, Varane, for tactical reasons, and he, for, for just for some reason, is not using him, I honestly, man, I pack my bags and go, man. That's straight up disrespectful, man. Yeah, you yeah, know, man. Play your uh, best defenders see. and keep it as that, man. I could see him drop, to be honest. I think that's a good shout. I think Ten Hag is so mad at times that he could do it. He could do it. The, the one I really don't want to see is Lindelof. This is the first one I would sell. I'm oh, yeah. He's it. back in it. He's back. He's back, you know. He's back. I think we could see a Lindelof Evans, Lindelof Maguire. Oh, because oh, because me, Lindelof is one of those where he finds a way. He finds a way. He's I don't know how, but he finds a way to play and to annoy the life out of you. So I, I wouldn't mm. rule it out, man. I wouldn't. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Stuffy, what are you saying, man? Are you are you confident in this game? What are you saying? Can we really be confident when it comes to United? I mean, I don't think confidence has been That's the thing true. that we associate with uh, all season. So apologies because I'm going to be the Grinch here and I'm not going to be as confident. Uh, we all gave praise, praise to Lissandro, uh on multiple shows. And I think we mentioned him briefly today uh, and how much he benefits the system. And I feel like no one's talking about him not being here next game. Um, big blow, so man. Big blow. I think, yeah, I think I think it's the biggest blow that we could have had at this moment. Nice. Uh, because as much as I don't think the, the, the performances have been great, as everyone's making out to seem, uh, yeah, these last three games, we did win, but I don't think we won in this fashion that everyone has been talking about, that we, you know, played teams off the park. Let's be honest. The Newport mm. County game wasn't good. The Wolves game, we played a magnificent first half and kind of, it looked like we were trying to throw away the game in the second half until Manu saved mm. us. And the West Ham game, listen, I think we played good in moments. We played bad in moments, but we that's got great. the win and that's what matters. I just don't think the performance was that good. Uh, we had mm. like three goals from 0.7 XG, so that's a bit abnormal there. Um, but mm. I think I think losing Lissandro is going to be a big blow. But I'm torn apart right now between us being bad because we lost to Sandro next game and us and Villa's form, because I don't think their form has been good. Uh, I think they've had one or two wins since in the league, since we've beaten them in that three, two game, no Trafford. Mm-hmm. So five, six games later, they don't have a lot of good results. Um, so that's, that's one thing that to consider uh, they did. They do only have one loss at home, but they just lost to Chelsea at home. It's just in the FA cup. So it's not going to show in the league form. But yeah, their performances haven't been good, and I'm and 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 I'm I'm a bit torn apart here with 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 my predicting my result, as I just don't think we're that good going away from home, and I don't know if this is going to be a bounce back game for Aston Villa because Aston Villa are out of form, but they still have everyone available, as far as I know. Mm. We don't have arguably our most important player available, which is Lissandro. 
So I'm not sure what's going to happen, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not confident. I wouldn't be shocked at either result. If we lose, I wouldn't be surprised. And if we win, I've seen us being able to get wins when we haven't necessarily played bad, so it could be one of those. I'm a bit on defense with this one. You know, usually I come in with chest when I'm predicting a win or a loss, but today I'm a bit, I'm a bit on defense here. Yeah, I think that's a good mm. point. You know what? Without Lissandro Martinez, I don't expect us to create as much and score as many goals, to be honest. I think it's that important. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what it is with me? A big up Jamaica United, big up Staffy. Um, you know what's mad, yeah? I feel like it's one of them where we, I, 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 miss, I just want to miss me out with the bullshit, like, in terms of, like, how one player can 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 just all of a sudden make us implode. Like, we need to be a bit more thick-skinned as a team, you know? Like, we need to have plan there needs to be a backup plan there needs to be some sort of idea now we can't sulk we can't just say you know of uh, Lissandro's out now and we all just fold away and the manager comes out with a million excuses you know like listen I know you're gonna come in Marcel here but I feel like there needs to be a plan though you know what I mean like you are gonna lose your big your big players in the season what now do you then do what do you then is there a backup plan is there you know is there some so, tactics to show for it like you know no I I agree with you. I agree with you, but I still feel I still feel we're in a rebuild process. So, and and I still feel we're trying to work towards that plan A only. I'm, I'm, I I remember last show. You know, we were describing the differences. Yeah, and, plan, and A. Have plan A. Yeah, yeah. But I still believe, and I think the manager still believes, there's a strong plan A in place. It's just that you know, and and that's what I was mentioning before, and I put tweets out about it. Luke Short left centre back. And, and Ten Hag did mention that, I think, in his presser saying, you know, he needs to oh, work on the footballers. You know, he needs to work on his... Like, without Luke Short left centre-back, he needs to work on those current group of players that I left to try and improve their build-up. I think he's he's accepting and acknowledged that. And and mm -hmm. through the, the last 15, like, the last 15 to 18 games so far, thus far this season... We've 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 seen how we've suffered without the left footed player at left centre back. No. So we're gonna. I do feel like that build up level is gonna reduce. Um, I'm more optimistic, like I said, than positive or confident right now in, in in at this result. But there's signs that there's very strong good signs that would show opportunities for three points in this game. You know, it's a six pointer mm. against a team that we have to win, but uh, a win against really uh, if we want to get that top four position. But I, I really do think, you know, if you're not gonna, if you don't, unfortunately, have a left footed guy at left centre back, you need pace. Then give me pace because we're still gonna mm. we're still gonna try and impose ourselves on the game. So we need to think about the yards in behind us. Um, you know, Wamba Saka is not available right now, so you know that yeah, you can't available. utilize him. And and if you're gonna persist with Luke Luke Shaw at left back and not Harry Amas, who I would maybe try there as a young player, let him go there and give us Luke Shaw at the left centre back position, so we can still get that advantage that Ten Hag talked about in the presser. I think that would benefit the whole look of the squad. But again, a, a young Harry against maybe Leon Bailey or a top top right winger, it's gonna be a long day. Or Diaby, who I think will cause us a lot of headache. But at the end of the day, I think I think it's difficult this game because you know you do lose a Martinez, so that service to the front line that Tenal talks about is, is is not going to be there at its top level. But we'll see what happens. I still feel like we can win this game. Yeah, this is a good point as well. Big up to Tyrone. So can I throw an idea? Delo, Shaw, Maguire, and Lindelof at right yeah. back. He can come in, make a midfield free build up, and then Delo push the midfield. No, no, you're not having that. No, no, no. Anything that has to do with Lindelof, keep the exactly. throw in, man. That is my bro, yeah, man. I know, I'm man. I'm not having it. <laughs> that is my bro, man. But nah, man, I can't be doing with Lindelof. Fed up. Fed up, fed up, fed up, fed up. You do know you'll probably see him, though, Adam. I mean, he, exactly, he, exactly. he played him last game in left back in the last few minutes of the game. Or am exactly. I wrong? Like I said, he finds a way, man. He finds a way. And I think he does it personally to me, man. <laughs> I don't think it's just you, bro. It's personal to me, bro. I... Yeah, yeah, you you should you should hear my dad speak about Lindelof, man. You would laugh. He's he's, uh, he's uh, Arab. Man. I can already imagine what he says. Exactly. And his name is Mustafa. Nah, listen, man. Varane, <laughs> <laughs> right side You know, you know. By the way, yeah. By the way, yeah. Varan, have you seen the stats of him with his left foot and his right foot, guys? So this myth that he's, you know, probably struggling in that department is showing. And I'm one of the biggest criticism of can Varan get the ball out of his feet. And, and maneuver. Can he, is he flexible in that kind of way? Is he adaptable? Like, uh, you know, you know, Mina. What's your opinion on Varane in terms of like, you know, his deficiencies and the myth that he's not great at the back and whatnot? Like, is it a concern for you, or you like, you want to bring it to Debo? No, no, nah, no. It's not. It's not a concern for me. Maybe, maybe as he gets older, yeah. But that's inevitably with all football players. You don't just win five Champions League 
from and being part of that five Champions Leagues for ab absolutely no reason. I do think United yeah. do need a centre back, but I wouldn't say it's because of his uh, Rafael Varane's deficiencies. I am probably under. Yeah. I'm probably one of the few people that would keep Varane. I would okay. keep him for another season. I, I would keep it. Obviously, I think his contract finishes this summer, and and I don't think they're gonna. I think they they haven't given him a one year extension. But I'd keep Varan mainly because I feel like he still has some quality in him. And you know, you one thing I've realized about United the last couple of years in particular is that you need that depth in centre back position. You don't want to be getting mm. to a point where you're like Adam and you're dreading the thought of Lindelof playing because players are getting mm. injured. You need you need that depth. You need that depth. And, and I think and I think he does have some flaws, but Rafael Varane is a phenomenal defender. He's a phenomenal. He looks shaky sometimes. When, I get scared sometimes when he's getting, you know, when someone's coming to him, when he's getting pressed, you're like, like, I think, can he get out of his feet quick enough? And he does do it. It's just because I think he does it in a very awkward looking way. It's not an aesthetically pleasing way like Lissandro Martinez, you know, or, or other, other people like Luke Shaw, etc. I think Varane's, I think he's a great player. I think he's a great player. You know what I mean? I think it's a, it's a good point. Maybe on the ball is not maybe his strength, let's suppose, but he doesn't prevent you from winning the biggest honours. So at least that's that. You can win Champions League, Ligas and World Cups with him. So even if it's not his strength, at least he, he's not a, an obstacle towards trophies. So at least that's that because you can't say the same for other players. Yeah, I agree with that. I think this mm -hmm. summer, right? So I think we're going to sign two centre-backs this summer, which means probably two have to go. I, I've been I've been like back and forth with Varane. One day I'm like, nah, he could go. But the other day, like he has performances like the one he had against Liverpool. And you're like, you can't let that kind of center back go because he's the best box defender mm. in the league potentially. Like his box defending skills are crucial. And in games against the likes of Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, those kind of teams that are going to get into our box plenty of Facts. times, you need a yeah. defender like that, right? So Maguire, Lindelof, that's who needs to go this summer. Those are the two names when it comes to center backs that need to go out the window. Go get two center backs. Like a Branthwaite, who for me is the top target. That's why I really want. That's my number Very one. Very good. Same, 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 and then same. All right, center back, probably like in the cheaper area, like kind of like Todibo, who'll be like 30 mil, let's say, right? Obviously, with the niche relationship. And then you keep Varan. So you have Licha, you have Branthwaite, you have Todibo, you have Varan. You can sign Evans to a one year contract again. I don't care. Just keep him there for fifth center back. Yeah. Kumbala, I think, will go on loan next summer. I think he needs a loan move to kind of just get that experience. Yeah. Kind of right. like the way you see Menji play, playing for Luton right now. That's kind of the move like Kwambala needs right now. So I think Varan, you keep him. And Lexi goes, he's too injury prone, right? If you have Varan as like your third, fourth trade center back, right? Then the injury concern becomes less. You play him about, let's say, twice a month, right? When you need him in those big games, because Varan has shown that he can he can go a month without playing and he can just go right into the 11 and drop a master class. Yeah. Like he doesn't need to be like this match fit, this like he doesn't need to be like match fit, play like eight games in a row to be like consistent in terms of match shape. I think he'll be fine with that. So. Yeah. I definitely keep him. And you need winners in the team. Like you need, you want young players mm. to come in in a team that has winners. Just like Cristiano Ronaldo and Rooney came in a team that had winners. And this is why we are struggling at the moment. Like we had a massive clear out after Sir Alex Ferguson. We got rid of the winners, the ones that knew how to did it. And then we got in young talents that were that weren't guided. So this mm. is what it's no surprise that we won our first trophy in five years, the moment we signed Casemiro and Varane. And not because they were that that good and they and they, they were good but they know how to win they keep the spirit they keep players focused those things are not on the pitch but they are important it's it, it the, at the end of the day those those are social human interactions they are things that you cannot see on the pitch that matter mm, yeah totally totally i agree but i agree um big up to uh Brantford is very very good I have no problems keeping Varane. It's just injuries I'm wary of. Yeah, I think that's the biggest sticking point for me. Obviously, it's just the injuries, isn't it? But when he's fit, you know what I mean? That's why, again, like I said to you, you have to have a fallback option. You know, who do you have in there? If you have the added depth, then it's it's one of them where you keep that in. So we've we've discovered the defence. Midfield, are we keeping the midfield still in there? Has anybody got a Casemiro agenda that they want to build out right now? Is Ericsson need to come into the team? Nobody? Are we keeping the midfield? Is everyone happy with midfield? I'd remove Bruno. <laughs> do you mean well? Uh, what? So, sorry, Adam. What, what do you mean in terms of selling them or uh, pro yeah. in the process for this season, utilizing them part of the squad? No, no, the, the team that would play for Aston Villa. We're talking about the midfield in terms of. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Ericsson, Ericsson. Uh, depending on what the situation is, utilize him. But I think Cass, even though he's extremely reckless, and I think these blue cards would be a ridiculous thing for him on yeah, ridiculous. two minutes. 
But, you know, I think, you know, he needs to be still part of the team alongside Kobe. Okay, okay. Uh, anyone else um, disagree? Casemiro out of the team? Or are you keeping him? Uh, the backups, trying to beat the backups me, were too bad. The backups were too bad. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, are you, are you trying are you, to beat me, say, game here? No, I'm saying, uh, for this game here, would you change, no, no. change the midfield? No. Okay. I, cool, I wouldn't cool. change. Oh, my, my concern is not with the starting lineup. My concern is usually with the second half, the way we make changes. I feel like every game in the second half, we tend to make the wrong subs versus doing the correct decisions at the time, yeah, which is sure. why I think we're lacking playing good for more than 45 minutes. I've heard us a lot of us. Uh, I heard a lot of us talk about good performances and usually say, remember that first half? Remember the that second half? We yeah. don't re really talk about a full hour of football. And I need to find a way where in the second half, whatever the game is at the time, we know how to play the second half and not get dominated uh, by the opposition, especially that we're away from home. We're, if we're allowing West Ham to get 17 shots at us, then I can only imagine how many would we let West Ham, uh, uh, Aston Villa get at us. Yeah. So I just want to make sure this manager can make the right subs at the time. But I can't really say what to do in the second half because I don't know the conditions yet. Are we going to be up? Are we going to be yeah. down? Is it going to be no, no? But that's the main worry that I watch for every every game. He finally started getting yeah. the midfield right, which is taking McTominay out of it. And we're seeing Hoyland thrive off that because now he's getting all that space into the box, the majority of that space Bax. to his own. Yeah. He doesn't have he doesn't have this guy who's crashing the glass like an NBA player behind him in McTominay. Um, so <laughs> he's been thriving off that. So the midfield, yeah. okay. Second half, we just need to find ways to not concede the game too much. Mm. Big up to um, Adi Wale says, when it's Varane on Martial, it's injury, same energy is in there for Luke Shaw, who misses twice as many games as both of them. Facts, you know. Again, another player who's injury prone, who I would sell in the summer, is Luke Shaw. But obviously the fan base are not ready for that conversation. And it is what it is, you know what I mean? So we just yeah. have to move on. There's bigger, there's bigger priorities for me than maybe the fullback areas, you know what I mean? I know Dallo had a great game as well. You know, by the way, Dallo, yeah. Is he, is he for you guys, your player of the season so far, Dallo? So people say Delos yeah. played a season so far. Would you yeah. say about Delos have yeah. played a season so far? Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. Me as well. Mom, you know what? Probably, yeah. You know, when you, when you, you know what it people. is? Like, it's because he's been, first of all, the most available out of the back four. You got to give him credit for that. Availability is the best ability. Mm. All the other guys have been injury prone. And he hasn't had, like, he's played both full back area. He's played both left back and right back. So he's shown the versatility. And he hasn't been, like, that. Yeah, he's had, like, a couple bad moments. But... Overall. He's been the most consistent out of all the players, so you got to reward that. It's kind of like when Luke Shaw went like a couple of years ago, when like in the 18 19, when the whole team was pretty much bad, but it's just like the best out of a bad bunch. Now that should not get a shout there. Guy, that should not get a shout in there, no? No, not at all. No, not at all, mate. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I seen Adam said it with venom, you know, man. Nah. Now listen, man. Everyone needs to get off Garnacho's back, man. I feel like for me, yeah, pause, but I feel like everybody's just on to Garnacho every single time, you know. I don't know what it is, you know. I was on a show before, you know. But, you know, I think Garnacho's doing his thing. Yeah, he has, you know, his uh, shortcomings, but a lot of people are so hasty on on, on Garnacho, man. I, I, listen, I don't rate him as what people think because a lot of people think, yo, you always back Garnacho, you always like defending him. I'm like, you know what it is with me though. I just like his endeavor, man. I like the fact that he doesn't give up. He had yeah. the first half, he was shit. Second half, he was he was 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 unbelievable in that in that second half in terms of what he was doing. So I don't know, man. That's why I like about Garnacho. That's why I keep backing Garnacho over Rashford, who would just walk around and just do, not do anything. That yeah. stink after stink. At least Garnacho will, will try and do something, yeah, get him behind. I'm I not do. saying he's world class. I'm not saying he's unbelievable. I'm just saying he's actually been one of our better be, best attacking performers this season alongside Hoyland. He's yeah. started to gather that momentum. Yeah, you know? I, agree. I agree. And you know what I'm saying? My dad said the exact same thing because he, he may be poor for like a good 15 minutes, Garnacho, but at least he's focused. And when he gets into like very focused mode, he's he's annoying to play against. And you can't you can't fight that. It's fair enough. I just I it's just <laughs> I didn't say it with Venom, it's just I think Dalo is clear for this season. And yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Someone saying here, name one. Name one on the ball attributes you listed, Said. That's the bare minimum, and the minimum don't get praise from me. Listen, I think for me, I think his well, on the right hand side, I think his ball carrying ability is getting better though. On the right hand side, on the left hand side, 
Yeah, exactly. He comes across left hand side. I don't think, I don't think he's there. He, he's he's too for me hasty in terms of he wants to cut in and wants to shoot. And his ball striking ability is not that great. Still not that great for me. But I think he's better on that side, right side. He makes better decisions on the right hand side. So you know, what I mean, he's not a finished article, but he is getting better and he's showing better than Anthony. And I know that's the bar's <laughs> low, but even even Rashford is twenty six. And you know what? I don't think there's a clear difference between Rashford and Garnacho's wing play at the minute. Like, it's, yeah, there's yeah. not much to, 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 to kind of say in that regard. So, you know, so I feel like for me, Rashford's doing his thing on that side. And then obviously, the left hand side is going to be probably uh, Rashford. And then obviously, up front, we're going to speak about Hoyland. Ahmad, listen, I don't know what's going on with Ahmad. You know what Free I mean? You know, do you know anything? Yeah. You know, do you know anything that's going on with Ahmad? Do you know any. Are you the guy that met him, Saeed? Ain't you the guy that met him? That's what I'm saying. You should know. You got the sources. Yeah. You got the sources. Direct sources. I messaged, I messaged him, yeah. I messaged him, but he'd, he'd seen the message, but I think he's he left not... you on red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of them, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. It's peak right now. I can't lie. Um, You know, you just have to be patient. This, this, this is the guy that's asking I, I, I believe, I believe the managers don't like technical ballers, you know. Let's be honest, man. Yeah, there you go. There you go. The manager don't like technical ballers, man. I'll be real with you. Like the manager's got an agenda against technical players, man. You know Sancho, what? Dude, I, I think he just Beek, prefers physical. He prefers Ahmed physicality Diallo. over technical. I think. Yeah, but that's that's bullshit, man. With this is what I'm saying. And now, yeah, it's indoctrinated in the fan base because the fan base don't even want De Jong now. So <laughs> you lot, yeah, that are going for this. Now nah, I'm being serious. Now the manager is absolutely pulling everyone over now because now that's, that's we're, we're we're kind of almost like. We're, we're we're allergic to technical footballers now, man. You like, know I, I like the hit. Of, I like the, the players that are running behind and that, that show a bit of energy. But I need technical players, man. I know Cobby's here, and I know he's a real one. But now this manager don't really like technical players, bro. Let's be real. You know, like, what I don't don't know. Don't know. you don't like. Don't he's, a weird, he's a weird individual. Uh, one well, day he wants this, the other day he wants. He doesn't know his own. He doesn't even yeah, know his own. Exactly. Saying we need a box to box doesn't mean that we don't like technical players. We're just yeah. saying in this area, we actually, this is what we need. I needed technical oh, players, players in, in the final third, and, and some people didn't want that. You know so, what, Trey? I, I, don't, yeah, I don't think Ten Hag has an agenda against technical players. I just think Ten Hag is so stubborn that whatever the fans want, he wants the opposite. Like, he just goes to war with the fans. Oh, no, he goes to war with himself, Adam. Do you think he yeah, knows he what he wants? Nah, does does anyone right. really think he knows what he wants? No, nah, I think you're right. I think, I, I think you know what I think it is. Musa said his best. He fell on his head, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, cost. Yeah, go on, you know. No, I was going to say, I think the manager is still grasping the concept of what works in the Premier League. And that's no disrespect yeah. to him, but I feel like, you know, there's some games you, you could do with technical players. Some games, you need the players that just run, the McTominays, unfortunately. You know, <laughs> other games, you, you want to play counter. -attack. I think he's still trying to understand that. And with Ahmad, the idea that Ahmad isn't that much of a physical player is not true, because if you Isn't watch him on your, he played in Sunderland. When you watch them going to Sunderland, I Tony Morbury Tony Morbury spoke about it quite a few times uh, in press conferences when he was talking about Ahmad Diallo. He said that, you know, since Ahmad had come, he, his intention was to work on his physicality, because that's what he lacked. And if you watched him throughout the majority of Sunderland, he you can see the progress in, in yeah. terms of physicality. He went from being a player that never tracked back and never supported de defensively uh, in Sunderland's season, to yeah. a player that was getting stuck into tackle calls in the box and winning the ball he was doing that all the time why he's not playing at United is it's one of them ones where I don't understand I personally think that the manager's ideas of players on the wings the Garnachos the Rashfords is someone that's got speed someone that can take on a fullback and get past them put in balls into the box that's finding wild, the man. second or the third runners whereas Ahmad Diallo if you watched him he likes to he's not he's he's like a Sancho in it you're not going to get a pass yeah guy. I know you're going to get link up play you're going to get passing you're going to get him going into the Ooh, pocket is it sustainable though? Because you're not always going to get space though, you know. You, you need players that can Elise. Like, this is what I'm saying. The manager will never want Elise. Never. He will never want Elise. He ain't explosive enough. I'm telling you now. To be fair, even he's not even my number one target for rank. I want Nico Williams. That's my what? number one target. Oh, oh man, no. this is what I'm saying, man. This is what I'm saying, man. This is oh, this like Nico, are, okay. Griggs. Griggs, I swear down to you. Have you watched Nico Williams play? Be honest. Yes, of course I have. To be Bro, fair, when Griggs guy... tells me about a player, Griggs takes about oh, a year first watching a I, player, and then okay, he starts okay, talking okay. about him. He's like, very I, I, explosive. I, 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 I miss, he can he play both wings. Grip. He can play both wings. Good ball. He has a he has really good ball striking with both feet. Also, Elise, bro, this guy has like about three injuries this year. Roy Hodgson has run him into the no, ground. Say, no, but forget the injury. I'm talking about forget the injuries. Okay. If, if they if they were. Though. No, I'm saying though, if if they didn't have if Elise didn't have injuries right now, are you still taking Nico Williams? 
he's just more my kind of winger. I've always liked him more direct. Okay, so fair enough. Been, then. Fair enough. Then. Fair enough. I'd rather get Pedro Neto than, than Nico Williams. I, I'm, I'm fine with that too. I'm fine with Pedro Neto too. I, I definitely take Pedro Neto. Okay. He's, but again, the okay. injury, bro. This okay. guy's he's had a lot of injuries too, so I got to factor that in. I don't know how much Wolves want. If I had a choice, I would go to that Wolves team. I take Pedro Neto and I go to I go take Mateusz Cunha and have him be the Bruno replacement. I've made him my I've made him my Bruno replacement. Mateusz Cunha. He's gonna. We're doing the Jolinton arc. He's graduated from the school of Jolinton. He's a number, he's an attacking eight. He's not a striker. He's an attacking eight. I've told you. I, I, I'm I'm telling you. What, what are you cooking, man? What are you cooking over there? I'm what are you, you cooking? He's more of an attacking eight. He can drop deep. His ball carrying is incredible. He's got the ball striking to get the goals he, we should, we've seen this season. Right, he's, not really a, no, he's not really a striker. You put you put him a little right behind Hoyland, you're cooking. I'm telling you, trust the but this guy wants. You know what this guy wants? He wants who who do you want in your midfield, by the way, alongside Cunio, if you had a chance? Kobe and who else would you have in there? I don't Kobe know. I don't know. I haven't decided who my Kobe partner is yet. I, I haven't. I have to do more scouting for that. I, some, he, one day uh, I want Onana. Man. The other well, day I want They're trying to kill us, Briggs, man. Briggs. They're trying to kill us. Who goes yeah. as captain in that team? Once you get rid of Bruno, who goes as captain right now? Yeah. Do a spin the wheel every day. Every, every day. Every <laughs> match, you're too young. You're too young. You, don't have, you, you haven't seen. I, just, 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 I don't young. think anyone in this team is captain material other than like them of Iran, who's not. I don't Lissandro, think will be like Lissandro, Lissandro, Lissandro. Bruno, right? Yeah, Lissandro. Lissandro. If you have to pick one, be he needs, teacher, right? He needs a bit more time. He needs a bit more time to to get his foot in the door a bit more, and he's always on the bench, right? He's on on the on the injury table. So, yeah, so Bruno's saying, the okay, only I'm one that is, looks like an out and out captain in this right team now. Is there anyone in this team that's is there anyone that's inspire. really captain material that deserves to wear that armband? Varane, Lissandro, and Casemiro are captain yeah, material for me. Those three for yeah. me. Okay, okay, but if we, there's something yeah. we're talking about. Maybe moving off from Casemiro, Varane's going to get a little bit more phased out. Leach, yeah. we're talking about injury. So then who do you have? Yeah, Leach then, Leach. Okay, yeah, but then you're only playing Bruno based on availability then. You know what I mean? But as a captain... Uh, for me, I'm Bruno's not like sure, captain man. material, by the way. I, I've already said this. I don't, for He's me, not that captain material. material. No, no, no. Every, no, every, every single day, it's yellow card for descent. That's the first thing. You know he has the most yellow card. Yeah, he went for the blue week. card, so I don't have to watch him no more. Yeah, wait, what, happens when, what happens when he puts the red card in Portuguese? And they out right that low-key got me as well. That, listen, that would look he got oh, me. I can't lie to you. It's, it's, it's the nah, Brazilian fair, like, number nine. Like, I know what you mean, though. I know what you mean. It's, 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 it's like Brazilian number nines that aren't really number nines. They love to they love to drop a little bit deeper and that kind of stuff. And Cunha has physicality. We saw what he did at Old Trafford. He was ball carrying like crazy. He's the one that was dropping in the midfield and kept running, kept running, kept running. So it's not really like, like a number nine. Like 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 Sophia said, I think before, it's just the best of a bad bunch situation. But she was talking about something else. But in terms of the captain right yeah. now. It's a best of a bad bunch situation, yeah. And Bruno is the best of the bad bunch of out of every single player in this team. I'd give it to I'd give it to Varane to be honest. I did, I told you, you can only play wheel, man. Every single match, every single match, match is a different you know, uh, Bruno for me, like this is just me, but I wouldn't start Bruno. Just and then I just would just wouldn't start him to start like from the beginning. And I just don't no, think Bruno, he has, my, no, my number one Bruno Paris. replacement would be Florian Brace, by the way. That's my number one. But that's yeah, of course. Yeah. But you're, uh, talking, you're talking different class. Him or Musiala, man. Him or Musiala, but I don't see them coming to us. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. I think we're not even third or second. Tr- like we're not. We're not. I think you know what, man. I'm looking at talent in Europe here. Yeah. I don't know if we're gonna get these kind of players. You know, I'll be real with you. I'm scared because of this. Window, you know, because we, we, I, we, you have a fan base that is obsessed with youth but doesn't want to give it time, and we have a fan base that is obsessed with talent that doesn't like to watch talented players do talented things. Yeah, like we need yeah, Champions football, man. Because every time I see people on Twitter like graving about Rodri at City and those players, I say you wouldn't love those players. What are you talking about? You don't <laughs> like players that make passes and keep it simple. Like if if Kobe Minor wasn't from an academy, our fans wouldn't like him that much, would they? Yeah, true. That's true. You know, you know what's mad, yeah. Just before we get our predictions and whatnot, like you know, the technical players that are probably in other teams, yeah. Do you think they're watching United closely? And be like, yo, can we? Can I get into that team? Or is he gonna have favorites and whatnot? Because Bruno's a, a stick, a start, starter now. You're looking at Milo. He's looking at you know. Do you reckon that players are coming into this team thinking, yo, man, I can get into this team? Like, or they hesitant? You know, what do you reckon, Marcel? In that, in that regards, like the recruitment, you know, um, like, they want to come to United. Like, do you feel like we're gonna miss out on a couple? Again, I'm I'm gonna go on the optimistic kind of or like like in your in yours have to get a caliber of footballer with the mindset that. They are ready to compete for the position. When we played our best football, you know, or back in the day, it was it was Andy Cole, Dwight York, Teddy uh, Sheridan, Oliver Skolska competing for two positions on the football pitch. Ineos yeah. need to bring that 
culture back into the team. So any footballer that comes and wears this shirt, they need to be able to have that kind of understanding that they're competing for the shirt. Does Ten Hag push an agenda too much or believe in his philosophy too much in terms of players? When And I'm talking specifically maybe Anthony over Ahmad. You know, Anthony should not be getting the minutes that he's getting ahead of Ahmad, in my opinion. But then we have to balance in maybe Ahmad's knee injury, you know, trust Ten Hag to, you know, with that process of integrating a footballer. He's done that well with Ganacho. So, you know, I don't think the players should be coming in with that rotten kind of mental behaviour that I think Sancho had with them. You know, just overall for me, he wasn't a top, top level pro hungry to play for the club. I think, you know, Sancho, you know, wasn't that just quite plain and simple. So, you know, we need players on, you know, a, a, a good wage, not astronomical wages and no trophies or no GA. They need to come in at a good wage and, and still have to prove something when they enter the football club. Same for Ineos. When Ineos come into the football club, they have to prove that they can deliver the certain type of footballers that Ten Hag needs. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, your your last point, Mina. You you know, in terms of the recruitment, yeah. Are you, are you thinking United fans are going to be disappointed this summer, or do you, have you got hope and um, optimism for this for the recruitment? I wouldn't say I have optimism, but I think Ineos got they got a point to prove. So we'll see what they do. Like I, I honestly don't have much. I feel like a lot of the recruitment in the summer will play into where United finish in the table. If United finish outside of Champions League, it'll be interesting to see the recruitment strategy that Ineos go for. If they finish outside of European football as a whole, I think that will have a hindrance on 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 the transfer strategy. But I'm hoping that you know announcing Umar Barada, you know, when January they did it, they announced him in January. So I'm hoping, and the fact that he's on garden leave with Man City should allow him time to kind of develop the idea of where United are heading. So whether that is bringing in the DOF, bringing in, you know, re new recruitment team, etc. I'm just saying it's going to be an interesting summer. I think, I think this summer is going to be probably as entertaining as Eric Ten Hag's first summer when you do you remember the Frankie we went, we went from four mm. whole weeks of Frankie De Jong nonsense uh, Fabrizio Romano every day tweeting the same thing just with different <laughs> yeah, yeah it's going to be ten times worse this summer it's going to be ten times worse I promise you that so we're down you know it's going to be crazy you know man but I think the outs are going to be just as more as the ins man but listen man we need to get top four man that's the main thing and we have to win I'm going to go for 3-2 Man United. Get your predictions in, guys. 3-2 Man United. I think it's going to be an entertaining game. There's going to be back and forth, Marcel. I think it's going to be a transition versus counter-attack versus high line. Broski, like, it's going to be a big game, man. Yeah, massive game, massive game. Um, I like what Adam was saying in terms of no matter what style of football you want to Im implement in a game, transitions is going to be part of each element or phase. And and that's what we're going to see a lot of because they can also attack and defend. Um, It's going to be an open game of football. We've conceded a lot of goals in the last few games as well, yeah. except for that clean sheet at home against West Ham, which is really good. But again, we're away from home. That was something that we suffered with even last season, adversity and being able to deal with adversity away from home and, and, and see the results through. So we're going to see an element of that. But again, for the reasons, oh. you know, that front three. And I think if we impose ourselves on the game, I think we won 3-2 at home last game, last time we played them. So there's no reason why we can't win, free, like what Mustafa's saying, 3-1 uh, to United. And also what Mustafa said before about Lacey. Sheer Lacey, uh, you know, up on, on the right wing, cold footballer in the youth team. So somebody else that, you know, Ten Hag at some stage might be able to integrate in. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to win this game, 100%. I'm um, very, very, you know, I believe in this team. I believe in the momentum that's been happening of recent. So yeah, 3-1. Mm, yeah, Mino, how are you feeling? Uh, big up to, uh, yeah, <laughs> big up to Jeroke United. Mino, how are you feeling? What's your, what's your kind of thoughts and then prediction? Yeah, I'm 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 hoping United win. Um I'm not going to give a prediction because I'm very I feel like I'm very inconsistent with it this season just because it's been a difficult season. One thing that's given me a bit of faith is seeing Chelsea beat them midweek. So that's given me a yeah. bit of faith. That's given me a bit of faith and also the fact that we beat them this season. Um I think it will be a game with goals. I think it will be a game with a lot of chances and I think it's going to want to be it's going to have to be one of them games where United take their chances because I feel like second half especially away from home, it could come back to bite United. 
it could actually come back. Mm-hmm. So hopefully it's a game they take their chances, create a lot of chances, get a lot of shots on goal. Um, it's evident that Emmy Martinez is is there to be beat. So, same could be said about Andre Onana, but you know I remember last yeah. season a lot, a lot of people, even the beginning of this season, calling Martinez one of the better goalkeepers in the league. Um, so United have to test him. Um, but the biggest test for us will, will be in our back line. That'll be the biggest test and see how quickly we progress the ball from the back line to the front. Um, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say two, 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 one, two, one United. Two one United. Uh, Adam, what are you saying, bro? Uh, I'm going two two draw. I think two, two I draw. Think, yeah. I don't think we are consistent enough to go and win. I don't think the men- the mentality is the problem with the team as well. Like we could go two yeah, nil and, and like stuff he said. You know, innit? Yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly. And like stuff he said, we come back second half, two two. They go, they score back to back, and then we end up afraid of losing. We maybe we hope maybe we scrap like a three-two in the last minute. It would be good for the spirit, but it's never really convincing, is it? And you can't go from a team that can't put like more than a half uh, than than a half together to full ninety minutes. It's too much of a jump. So I'm going with two-two because I'm, and this is the thing. I'm very bad with predictions because I always want the team to win, so I never predict a loss. But I'm not really the most optimistic guy in general. Like I'm always a bit scary of afraid of losing. Oh, yeah. so I'm going two-two. Two two. Um, Greg, man, chat to us. What are you saying, brothers? Licha was, uh, Licha was like healthy. I'd be more like on the Marcel level of optimism in terms of, like confidence. I still think that we'd actually like gonna get a win. I told Staffy when we did our show like on Wednesday. I'm like, I don't rate Villa right now. I think their form is terrible. If they come up with a high line against us, I think Garnacho, Hoyle, and Rashford have been in much better form over the last couple of weeks. And I hope United kind of keep this vibe that they've introduced us to in terms of scoring the first goal. That's a nice vibe they've introduced us to as compared to the earlier in the year when we were just conceding first. So if we score first against Villa, kind of get that lead, obviously we'll probably lose the lead, right? Because we don't know how to keep the lead to save our life. The moment one call goes against us, then the other the crowd gets momentum and stuff like that. But um, I think Villa can get got at even without Leach. Like we beat them without Leach this year, right? So like that doesn't like Leach doesn't play the biggest factor. And I think that Villa part, I think that score kind of flattered Villa because I think we were actually much better than them on that day. They just got two goals off set pieces because Onana wanted to chat with Leon Bailey. Yeah. I don't know what they're talking about. And then the second goal is a set piece. So I didn't get at them. I just think our four I think I agree with Mina our forwards have to be clinical. Whenever they get the chance, I'm sure Rafford's Rafford's gonna get one big chance. Hoyland's gonna get one big chance. Garnacho always seems to find himself on the end of a big chance. And then you just need to score it. Um and yeah just trying to just hope that Emery just keeps playing this high line. I'm gonna go I'm gonna, yeah I think two one I'm gonna go with that. I think that's kind of where I'm leaning towards. One and then stuff it, man. What are you saying, bro? I don't know, bro. I honestly don't know. Um, the 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 apps is in the back line, like Griggs said, it's just like the one reason I, why I'm not confident going. I, I, I wasn't even confident with that, so now my confidence is even less now. And I don't know, just something tells me, and I don't know, I have this gut feeling that he's gonna change the midfield to make up yeah. for what he doesn't have from Lissandro. Yeah, in, in in the back line, mm. like just something tells me he's gonna change something. I, I don't know why. I don't know what it is. Actually, I do know why. I just explained that, and I just don't know what it's gonna be. Like I, I I really don't know what he's gonna do, but I do have a feeling he might change change something in that midfield just to make up for the lack of progression coming from from one of his center backs. Linda and, I think that's bro, wallah, bro, I wouldn't be surprised, bro. He I might actually. Put, I actually think he might put Lindelof as a fullback to light, to make up for not having Lissandro inverting from, from the centre-back position. And if he does that, you guys already know we're going to lose. Because I, I think he's so overrated for what he does in the midfield. I used to I used to actually like Lindelof until I saw the light. I'm like, this guy, actually, his passing in the midfield is so useless. This is mostly sideways. He rarely ever progresses like forward. So I don't know. I have a feeling like he has, he has a, a surprise for us. I want to be optimistic and predict a win, but I really don't. I don't think we're gonna win, so I'm just gonna say a two-two. So, so, so I don't have to predict the loss. Yeah, there you go, there you go, people, man. Big up to everybody who's here, man. Make sure you lot like the video on your way out, people, man. That will be very, very thankful if you could do so. Big up Marcel. Big up Mina. Make sure you check out Mina Football. Make sure you check out Staffy TV. Griggs Talks and Adam Man Red on Twitter. Listen, man, it got a little bit, you know what I'm saying, too crazy, but we, we managed to have a few timeouts in there and I'm it what? all is good. So, so, can I just say something on this? Yeah, yeah. I've not, I, it's not me, you know. 
It's not me, bro. No, Second, no, 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 no. For the first time, no, 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 no. remember the last time oh, when I went there again. Remember the last time I went to the show? He mentioned it's this is not the Marcel TV show. No, Look I, at I his, he's got Staffy TV can and red glowing thing? lights, bro. Yeah, it's not the Staffy TV show. He's done can that, I, he's no, got that on, glowing lights on your show. He had his phone out in the middle something? of the fucking camera a second ago. What's he talking about? Marcel, this is not the Marcel, Marcel show. And then he Marcel, said that twice. Go, it, bro, for Marcel. Society TV's viewers, can, go back and check the the, 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 when I left for my pizza show, I, he, he was speaking over me for no reason again. And I mentioned, oh, it's not the Marcel show. Again, he's done the same again today. Can we, keep, me, can we keep it amicable? We're all, we're all good I'm guys. I'm very amicable when Staffy I speak when guy. I'm spoken to. Marcel, you're a good guy. He's got the ego Staffy. with Staffy TV and regular...